Hi, I'm Diane Hendricks and welcome to Fresh to Frozen and Back. This show is going to make your life easier. In each episode, I will show you how to prepare fresh, delicious meals using wholesome ingredients, how to freeze them properly, and then bring them back to the table at a later date. This show in particular, it's all about patties and cakes. Patty cake, patty cake. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is my spaghetti squash cakes. I love spaghetti squash. Don't be intimidated by it. You see it at the market. Sometimes you walk right past it. Inside of this little guy is some magic. It cooks and has strands that are just like pasta. You can twirl it and you can spin it around, but the calorie content is so low. One of these, the entire contents of the inside is only about 150 calories. And there's about 100 calories in just a half a cup of pasta. So it's really magical. You can actually combine the spaghetti squash with some angel hair pasta to get a little bit more uh, uh, volume, but it's really good and I'm gonna show you how delicious it is. So it's a little hard to cut, so just make sure you have a very sharp knife. And you're gonna start with the very top like pointing straight down into it and then pull sideways. Just watch this side so that the tip of it doesn't come back up. So you're gonna press down and then you're, I just go all the way around it. And then I'll just go back in here and then just push down because you wanna get through that end, okay? And then once you have it opened, you have the seeds and you have the fibers and the membranes. All you're going to do is you're just going to scoop it out with a spoon that has a little bit of a sharp edge to it. You're just gonna go around it and scoop it out. So just go around in a circle and scoop it out. And this is kind of the tough fibrous part of it, but now this is ready to go. Now in here, you can take your time because I always do. I never throw the seeds out of anything. Butternut squash, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, pumpkins, no. You squeeze it and you see how all these little seeds just pop out when you squeeze it? You just squeeze and they all pop out. You can take these, toss them with a little bit of olive oil, which we are using Cortijo Trofias, which is so good. Um, I'll tell you all about that. That's one of my favorite olive oils. Um, so you're just gonna toss that with a little bit of olive oil, a little salt and pepper, some spices, and put them on an even layer on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake them off and you get these delicious, crispy, and yummy seeds. But today I'm not doing that. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these, once you get the seeds and the insides out, you're gonna drizzle a little bit of oil on them, sprinkle a little salt, a little coarse salt, and a little bit of pepper, and then you just put them on a parchment lined baking sheet, cut side down. So you're gonna put both of these, once this is cleaned up, cut side down, stick it in the oven, 350 for about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. You really can't overcook them. And then you can just shut it off, leave it in the oven. I mean, I've left these out overnight after I cooked them and the next morning they're ready to roll. So I'm gonna show you what they look like once they're cooked. Okay, so this guy's been roasted and you can see that it's, it's all the, caramel, the caramelization of all the sugars from inside of this, the natural sugars from inside of the squash. So then all you're going to do is you're going to scrape it down. You can see, look, and it comes out like pasta. It's amazing. This is natural, natural stringy pasta-like squash. If you've never had spaghetti squash, you have to try it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. Now this has been out of the oven for a couple of hours, so it's starting to get a little drier, but when it first comes out of the oven, it's extremely moist. There's a lot of water in vegetables. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your hands and really squeeze the water out and then wrap a towel or some paper towels to get some more of the water out. Then the rest is simple. You're just gonna take the spaghetti squash, plop it in a bowl. This is so easy. We're gonna add a little egg to help bind it, a little bit of flour just to hit. We're going to add a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, I don't want like uh, minced garlic in here because I'm not really cooking it that long, so I don't want that raw kind of garlicky flavor. And some uh, freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano, whatever you like. You can do Pecorino Romano, whatever kind of cheese that you like. 
Then you're gonna just mix it all up. This is all there is to it. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt. Oh my gosh, oh, it's, it, it's simple and delicious. Hit of olive oil, a little pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, and we're ready to roll. And this is all you do, that's it. And then we're going to form little cakes out of them. Oh my gosh, yummy. And let's turn the stove on. Okay, so now we're going to um, hit this pan with a little bit of olive oil. I'm not going to use this delicious finishing oil. I'm going to use an oil that has a little bit higher of a smoke point because we're going to kind of heat it up high. And you don't want a delicate, buttery, flavorful oil like this oil to cook. It's a finishing oil and it's so yummy. Okay, so let's get this hot. Okay, so even, even the, the people that would be most fearful of something like this, like spaghetti squash or your non-squash eaters or your non-daring eaters are going to love this. Okay, so you're just gonna gather a little bit up and you're just gonna plop it in your pan. You can hear it sizzle. And that cheese is gonna bind with it and the, the little bit of flour and the egg. Oh, it's, they're so good. Now you can see that the oil has all gathered to one side, so I just moved it over. And you can make these as large or as small as you like, and they freeze great. So let's, okay, there we go. So let's let these cook up for a minute, and then I'll flip them over. Okay, so these are cooking up nice, and we're gonna flip them over. Look at that. They almost look like potatoes. So good. Oh. And then we're gonna serve these with a little bit of sour cream and some chives, and it just, oh, really makes it a really nice side dish, or a snack, or even an appetizer, a really interesting appetizer. There you go. So we're gonna let them cook a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna flip these guys over. They got a little bit of browning on the bottom, but we're gonna flip them back over for presentation. Perfect. Okay. Now, here's all you do to serve them. They're done. Simple as that. Different, delicious, filling, Interesting. Okay, so let's get the sour cream and these chives. And here's all you do to serve them. You're just gonna take them. You're gonna put them on a plate, bink. Just as easy as that. It's like a uh, spaghetti squash latka. <laughs> okay, so you just serve them like this. And once they cool down, they'll even firm up a little bit more. And then we're gonna take a little dollop of sour cream. You can use Greek yogurt, nice thick Greek yogurt. Oh, I mean, look at that. Who would have thunk it? Spaghetti squash. And then we're gonna hit it with a little bit of chives or uh, green onion, whatever you like. Don't make it, don't be too neat. Be a little messy. A little messiness is good. Then we'll plop a little bit extra sour cream in the middle for anybody who wants some more. And there you have it. Simple, delicious, different spaghetti squash cakes. When we come back, I'm gonna show you a simple recipe for crab cakes that will knock your socks off. Okay, super simple crab cakes, barely any filler, a tiny bit of flour to help bind it. You're gonna love it. Okay, and here's all you do. I have some lump crab meat. You can use jumbo lump. You can use any type of crab meat. Just make sure you pick through it, which means just to kind of go through it and feel for any of the shells, because you don't want to be biting in any of that. Okay, I got a little bit of Greek yogurt. Nice, thick Greek yogurt. 
egg, help bind it. We have a little bit of crab, so I don't want to use too much egg. Lemon juice, of course. I love lemon in it. And we have a combination of dry mustard and nice smoky paprika. And we're going to mix all this together, and then we're going to add a little flour. I'm going to use my hands for this. Mmm, perfect. Now we're going to add just a little flour. Can't make crab cakes or anything like this without making a little bit of a mess on your hands. It's the only way to get in there and do it. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to form these, and then we're going to stick them in the refrigerator for about half an hour, just to kind of firm up. Okay, so we got this nice and formed. Oh, we need a plate. Here's one. And what we're going to do is we're going to set them on the plate. We're not going to pat them down yet. We're going to make them all this uh, little. I like making little crab cakes because I'd rather have two. I'd have two than one big one. And you're just going to kind of squeeze them together. And then just set them here. Oh my gosh, they look so good. You can add things that you like into crab cakes. Um, a little bit of super, super, super finely diced bell pepper is really nice in there. And celery leaves is a nice addition to crab cakes. So the leaves of the celery. This one's gonna be a little bigger because I wanna use all of it. So we got one guy that's a little bit bigger. So I don't know, the hungriest person at the table gets the biggest one. Okay, so we're gonna just set them like this and then we're just gonna pat them down and then form them. Pat, just pat them down and that's it. So you, just to show you all the different sizes. So this one's a little larger and then just set these in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes to a half an hour, so they kind of firm up a little bit. And then we're going to uh, sear them in the pan. Cortillo Trofias is 100% first cold pressed Arbequina Premier Extra Virgin Olive Oil. With more than 1,500 acres of olive plantation situated in Castilla La Mancha, Spain at 700 meters above Mediterranean sea level. The complete company is owned and operated modern state of the art olive mills with the very latest technological advances. The Arbequina olive is the top olive in Spain for the production of extra virgin olive oil. It has a buttery, fruity flavor and is highly aromatic. This premier product has less than 0.1% acidity and is smooth with no bitterness. It is a great premier finishing oil, good for dipping, salads, light cooking, and a perfect garnish for fish, meats, and vegetables. Due to its delicate nature, this extra virgin olive oil should never be overheated, only cooked slow and lightly. This extra virgin olive oil is available in over 60 international marketplaces and has been awarded many medals in many extra virgin olive oil international competitions. The product is available in the United States exclusively at International Specialty Foods of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and can be purchased online at www.insfoods.com in 250 milliliter and 500 milliliter bottles at $14.95 and $20.50 per bottle delivered. It's soon to be available on Amazon. In these episodes of Fresh to Frozen and Back, the olive oil that I'm using is extra virgin olive oil, Cortillo Trufias. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up some oil. And I'm not using the Cortijo Trofias because this is a finishing oil. So this is gonna be delicious on the end when we drizzle a little bit. So I'm gonna use an oil that has a little bit more of a high smoke point. Okay, so we're gonna let that go for a second. It doesn't take very long. And you don't need a lot of oil. And once the oil hits the pan, it gets more liquid. So it covers the entire pan. So use less oil. And you can always add more, but once it's in there, you know, it's not as easy to get out. So we're gonna crank that up, get that nice and hot. Okay, and that should be just about ready to go in a second. And we're gonna take these guys that have, they were sitting for 30 minutes in the fridge, just to kind of firm up. And we're gonna let them cook. Okay, so we're gonna leave them on each side for about one to two minutes, 
and then we're gonna flip them over and then um, I'm gonna show you at the end of the episode how all of these freeze, but these are so delicious, super low in calories and very, very tasty and the higher uh, grade crab meat that you use, like the jumbo lump, oh, it's just fantastic. Okay, now we're just gonna flip these guys over. Look at that, a little crispy on the outside and nice and soft and moist and yummy on the inside. It's okay if you lose a little bit there. You wanna use a nice strong spatula to get these up. Look at that, nice golden crisp, hardly any filler, like a dusting of flour. And there you go. Okay, and that's it. Now it's time to plate. You just put them on your plate. You can put them on a, parchment, on a paper towel lined uh, plate if you'd like, but I use such a little bit of oil. It's okay, there's not that much oil in here. And that's it. And then you can just serve them with a squeeze of lemon. Squeeze some lemon over them. Oh, so good. A little bit of parsley sprigs, however you wanna do it. And then I'm going to throw some extra lemon on because I like extra lemon when I have crab cakes. And then we, we are going to add a little bit of this delicious finishing oil, the Cortijo Trafia. And there we go. So yummy, a little hit of pepper. There you go. And you have a beautiful crab cakes that have minimal filler. And that's what you want. You don't want crab cakes that have breadcrumbs or anything like that in them. And that's really simple. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you some scallion pancakes with a really delicious like soy ginger dipping sauce. You're gonna love it and it's really easy. Okay, scallion pancakes. I have a couple of really good friends that are Korean and this is a very classic dish in South Korea. I just made it really, really super simple. I, this is something you can do at home in like five minutes and it's so good. Okay, here's all you do. You're just gonna take flour. Two eggs. Nice hefty pinch of salt, hefty pinch of pepper, and some cortijo. Olive oil, we love this, from the Arbequina olive, which is one of the top olive oils, olives in Spain, and this is 100% Arbequina, which is so good. We're just gonna mix that up, this is all it is. We're gonna mix this all together. Instead of water, I'm going to add seltzer, because what that does is it gives it um, it'll help it to like rise because the fizziness of the seltzer actually is better to use than water. So even when you're making pancakes at home, use seltzer instead of water if you have a pre-made mix. Gonna add more. And then you're just gonna get this all mixed together and that's it. It's as simple as that. We're gonna chop up some scallions because these green onions have such a flavor, they're gonna add such a nice, uh, like distinct, deep flavor to this. Now we're gonna chop up some scallions that have been washed. And they can be really uh, in large sections, almost a half an inch to even an inch large, because you want that nice bite of flavor. And we're just gonna toss them in there. So good. When you get towards the end, when you get towards the white part, um, the, the flavor is more powerful. So I would go a little bit smaller in the, in the pale yellow and white parts. But the top, the leaves, which is what gives it beautiful color, you can just literally take off those ends, and these were washed, and just go bigger. Go big or go home. That's what I say. Okay, and that's it. We're gonna heat up some oil. So we're gonna get this pan nice and hot. Now I'm feeling a little bit like I want a little bit more seltzer. Because you don't want these thick, thick, thick. You want them kind of thin. So good, and the dipping sauce is what's gonna make it. 
So I'm gonna plop a couple of these in this pan and then we're gonna make this amazing dipping sauce. We're gonna add some oil to the pan. It's nice and hot. Okay, and then we're going to do a couple of ladles full. I'm not gonna use all this because this pan's not big enough. You want them to kind of spread out in the pan. So I'll make three in this pan. You can make them all different sizes. I'm gonna make a little tiny one for you to see too. And then just kind of tap the pan a little bit to spread it out. And then just let that cook. While that's cooking, I'm going to show you this very, very, very quick dipping sauce that is absolutely fantastic. So we've got some soy sauce. You can use low sodium if you want. We've got some garlic. We've got some freshly grated ginger, which adds just such a powerful, powerful flavor. I'm going to stop for a second, and we are going to flip these babies. Oh, look at that. You got to keep your eye on everything while you're cooking because you don't want things to burn. There we go. So we've got some nice uh, crispness here. Let's get back to it. Soy sauce, garlic, freshly grated ginger, and we have some brown sugar. That's going to give it a little bit of a sweetness. You don't need a lot. We're going to chop up a little bit of chives and put that in there. A little green onion. Okay, we're gonna add that. And we're gonna add some sesame seeds, which is gonna give it a nice little flavor. Now the key with this sauce is you need just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit to dip in. And we are going to add a little bit of this delicious Cortillo finishing oil. I don't wanna add sesame oil to this because it makes it a little bit too, it's a little too powerful for them. And that's it. And then to plate it, you find a little bowl because you don't need a lot. You're gonna put the dipping sauce on the side and you're gonna put the pancakes right in there. Oh, so good. Okay, so yummy. Now this makes a really great appetizer. You can make them really, really tiny too so they're little one bites and then you just dip them right in. That. You can see all the scallions in there, and then you just dip it right in there, and it just is so, so, so good. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm. Yummy. You're gonna love them. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to freeze everything. We'll see you in a minute. All three of these freeze so beautifully. You just take them and put them on an even layer on a baking sheet and stick the whole baking sheet in your freezer. And as soon as they're solid, then you just stick them in a Ziploc bag and you label it and you date it. And they're so easy to defrost. You just defrost them on your countertop. You can reheat them in the microwave, on the stove top, or in the oven. So these are the spaghetti squash cakes. These are the scallion cakes and the um, crab cakes are a little bit more delicate so what I like to do is take a container that's not freezer safe and then label them in a Ziploc, Ziploc bag inside of a uh, freezer a container that's a little sturdier for your freezer so that you don't have to worry about them breaking. And that's it, super easy, you bring them out. Guests come over, come knocking on your door. You're like, oh my God, what am I gonna feed them? And you look what you got. You got all this, you whip that uh, dipping sauce and you're ready to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching Fresh to Frozen and Back. Please share this episode with your friends and those that you love. Um, visit my website, subscribe to my YouTube channel and just follow this and tune in next time. Thanks.
Cortillo Trofias is 100% first cold pressed Arbequina Premier Extra Virgin Olive Oil. With more than 1,500 acres of olive plantations situated in Castilla La Mancha, Spain at 700 meters above Mediterranean sea level. The complete company is owned and operated modern state of the art olive mills with the very latest technological advances. The Arbequina olive is the top olive in Spain for the production of extra virgin olive oil. It has a buttery, fruity flavor and is highly aromatic. This premier product has less than 0.1% acidity and is smooth with no bitterness. It is a great premier finishing oil, good for dipping, salads, light cooking, and a perfect garnish for fish, meats, and vegetables. Due to its delicate nature, this extra virgin olive oil should never be overheated, only cooked slow and lightly. This extra virgin olive oil is available in over 60 international marketplaces and has been awarded many medals in many extra virgin olive oil international competitions. The product is available in the United States exclusively at International Specialty Foods of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and can be purchased online at www.insfoods.com in 250 milliliter and 500 milliliter bottles at $14.95 and $20.50 per bottle delivered. It's soon to be available on Amazon. In these episodes of Fresh to Frozen and Back, the olive oil that I'm using is extra virgin olive oil, Cortillo Trufias.